Hey, what's going on, y'all? Nobody Famous here. Uh, I linked up with MachineMasters.com for this new series called Ableton Beatdown. So what I'm going to do uh, for several videos is basically break down each one of my Ableton sessions for different beats and songs and things like that. So you can kind of just get a feel of how I use Ableton, how I you know, do my arrangements, um, drum programming, all that kind of stuff like that. So uh, here's the first one, this song. Uh, instrumental slash song is called Bow Down. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started, kind of break down the different parts. Um, I'll let you hear a quick snippet of it and then it will go from there. So it's basically just the, um, the verse part. So I'm gonna do, I'll show you just my different elements and how I kind of built it up and they go from there. I usually work, start working out of the clip view and once I get most of my uh, main elements down, then I'll, I'll sequence it out into the arrangement view here. And then that's when I'll start adding like just different synths and um, sound effects here and there, wherever I want them to go. But basically it started out with these different parts. So I found this, um, this loop, this vocal loop, and I have it actually frozen right now because it has a bunch of different effects on it just to save some um, CPU power. But this is what the loop sounds like right here by itself. Bow down, bow down, bow down, bow down. So pretty simple, um, straightforward and things like that. So what I did was, um, I'm gonna just mute all these real quick. and I'll leave that bow down playing. So what I did was I started with um, this pad right here. So these are the chords that I have in my pad. And with that pad playing with the, um, with the bow down, it sounds like this. Bow down, 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 bow down. So if I go back to my um, arrangement, but you see it starts off with just a pad right here on the first four bars. And then on the second four bars, it comes in with this guitar synth right here. A uh, well, chopped up guitar sample, actually. So this is what the slices look like right here. And if I open it up, you can see all my different, you can see the loop and then where the slices are. Now what I did with this, with this loop is, and I'll extend this out and let you hear the whole thing, is this reversed and then I chopped up on certain parts. So it's in the same key, but if I um, press play on this, this is what the loop sounds like. Or actually, let me activate that track. And these are just different, different sections that I chopped out of it and then I have that reverse on there and then they kind of sound like this. So what I did was basically I chopped it up and then I layered it over that um, that original pad that I had. So it sounds like this. By itself. Bow down, bow down, bow down, bow down. So that was basically the 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 base um, the basic elements of my my melody for the beat um, and my backing with the pad and everything like that. Now I'm kind of giving you some some of my inner workings of these beats and things like that with this, but I use um, a lot of a lot of effects that I use actually come straight from Ableton, and then I I like um, a few effects out of the Waves bundle. So I like to keep it kind of simple. Um, I use flange on some things, but I love like the SSL. Um, plugins from Waves and then like I said most like the auto filter, ping pong delay and, and different reverb from Ableton itself so a lot of the stuff I use is actually directly from Ableton. Um, so I'm now going to start showing you the different elements and how I built it up um, after I got these basic three parts into the beat. Um, so for the intro I added these little bells right here so it sounds like this. Bow down, bow down, bow down, bow down, bow down, bow down. Down. And that's real simple. Um, it's just coming from Nexus. This is what the track looks like. So just a couple of notes, nothing, nothing too serious. Um, headed leading into that, I have this reverse symbol. Bow down, 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 bow
Bow down, bow down. And usually for a lot of my reverses, um, symbols and things like that, I have. A, I always start off. This is just basically my default um, template for for Ableton. But I start off with a reverb and then a delay for my send. So I'll just send that. Um, basically send that reverse to that to that reverb, and it sounds like this isolated. All right, so once you have that intro part come in, the drums come in. So basically, I have a bunch of different drum kits that I use, um, and then I'll build out these different drum kits as well, just kind of depending on my mood or what I'm going for. But I like to just save things, save, mix them um, for one song, and then save the presets. So if I'm trying to get ideas down, it just the workflow is just quicker. So um, let's see here. That's the kick that I really like. It actually has other drums in there too. Um, but I actually, the way I did this beat, um, I actually did it norm different from the way I normally uh, sequence my drums. So what I can do next is go, I have my hi-hats. My hi-hats sound like this. I got them EQ'd out. Um, and I have them transposed up. So really simple, um, just went in basically drew them in, didn't play those in. Um, then I'll have the snaps. So when you add those three elements together with the drums. Some claps. Crash. Um, so basically those are just three different elements I had over there. Then once the bass comes in, uh, my drums actually switch up. So let's see. Um, not the bass, but the hook, excuse me. My drums switch up. So I have those snares coming in. So by itself, then these, um, this is actually sequenced in. I didn't, I played it in loosely and then I kind of went and tightened it up. But this is actually all on the triplets grid. So you see I got my uh, triplets grid on. And then if you zoom in, you can see that it's all lined up right there. So the drum loop by itself with the snare sounds like this. Just kind of interesting um, groove. Just to give you an idea of some of the um, processing I put on those drums here. Um, my kick, that's what my kick looks like. Or actually right here, sorry. So just a little bit of EQ and, and picked out some really good samples that I like and layered those uh, three different samples on there. And then my snare, I have um, a snare compressor on there and then it has some reverb on there as well. So if I play that with what I have in there so far, remember I still have the hi-hats, the um, snaps, the claps, then and then uh, the crashes come in actually later so it's not on the hook part, so something like this. comes in halfway through that and then I have another uh, synthesizer that I like to use so it sounds like this by itself and actually at the end of that I, um, I had that note just hold out and sustain and then I added like some different effects on there And a pitch bend right here. And at the end of that pitch bend, it basically comes in with this little sound effect laugh. <laughs> wow. down. Um, and then also we have the bass line. So the bass line, I just I played it and then I copied and pasted. So I have a deep sub bass, and then I have more of like a, a synthy, um, grimier type sub bass or bass over that. So it sounds like this by itself. So that has a lot of bite to it, but it doesn't really have much sub to it. So what I did, I have I just brought in Nexus, put a sine wave in, um, and then layered that with the sub bass, so it has more of the low end. And 
basically all of that together sounds like this. Sorry. And then I um, also added like some um, some toms from like an 808 kit. So basically, I put that into a sampler and then I played them, um, found out found different notes that I like that was close to to the to the root key of the beat and then added those in. So by themselves, it sounds like this. At the end of that, uh, four bars or eight bars, excuse me. So this adds another um, element to the groove. So when all of that's together. And then the last part was this um, video game synth sounding sample. So I have that basically in a, um, in a sampler and the root key for that was G. So basically I can just add it to my pads, add it, you know, for my keyboard and play whatever note I want to play. Um, so basically this is what it sounds like when that's added in. And another thing, if you notice down here, I have the pan on 100% random. So basically it's going to play it like it's just going to pan left to right just at random intervals. So this adds movement to the track across the stereo field. So it's just something cool. Um, I, I kind of do that with hi-hats. I won't have it all the way up to 100. I might do like 10 or 20, but it just sounds good to just have um, just some movement like on certain um, elements throughout the beat and things like that. So that's like the basic parts. And then I have little sound effects and stuff. So on this breakdown right here, I have like a big sub boom and then this um, sound effect takeoff thing. <laughs> So basically um, on here I have my auto filter on and then I have some flange on that um, and then like I said right here it's just a straight sound effect. Put some reverb on it, cool for like a breakdown and things like that. Um, so after that that's pretty much it. Some automation here and there um, with some of the tracks, so, you know some of the synthesizers have some um, longer releases and things like that so if I wanted to cut off at certain parts. Um, I'll just automate the, the speaker on. As you can see, these two are off right here where it is on that uh, location of the track. So basically the hook sounds like this with the bow down on top of it. So basically that's pretty much the overall um, arrangement. This is what it looks like. I have some drops here and there, as you can see if you zoom in um, and things like that. I like to um, color code everything. Just these colors just for some reason stick out to me depending on the different elements. So I've been using kind of these color schemes for so long that I just know that yeah, black and gray is gonna be like percussion elements and drums and purples and greens. There's gonna be um, synthesizers and things like that. Um, also just, what you want to do is make sure that you organize everything. If you keep it organized, when you come back, you're like, oh, this is this, this is that. So I name all of my different tracks as I go. Um, I might, you know, get about five, ten tracks deep, and then I'll basically go in and um, and just name each one of my tracks so that I know what's what's what, and I don't have to listen to it and mute it. I just can go straight to it. So that's always good to just keep that in mind. Um, I don't do too much processing slash mastering of the of the final track. Um, I just try to get my mix as best as can and then if it's you know a professional project or something it's gonna get mastered anyway so I'll just take these two off. But I use this uh this magma and I put this devil's touch on there. I just like the way it sounds. It just kind of glues it all together, um, keeps everything smooth and and then I'll throw the um the L1 maximizer on top of it from waves. Um, but you can use any limiter, the limiter that comes in uh Ableton as well. So 
just as a quick overview, like I said, I usually start working out, find something like a like this um, vocal loop, or I might just have like a simple chord progression going, and then I'll start building on top of that. Um, and as you can see, I went to basically this bass group, and then I sequenced it in to my arrangement view, and then the rest of these tracks were added after like all of this layout was there and um, copy and pasting and editing and adding drops and different effects um, and transitions and things like that. So that's pretty much it for this episode of Ableton Beatdown. Um, like I said, I'm Nobody Famous. Y'all follow me on Twitter at Nobody Famous. Um, it's Nobody Famous Music um, on SoundCloud if you want to hear some more of this, this beat or some other beats as well. Um, MachineMasters.com, shout out to them. They're doing great things over there. Follow them on Instagram, Twitter, uh, check out their website. They got a ton of tutorials from everything from Ableton to the MPC to the machine, of course. So uh, y'all check that out and stay tuned for the next episode. Peace.